Hello, lovely ladies, and welcome to Zion's Company of Women podcast. I'm Lana. And I'm Courtney. And it's wonderful to have you with us today. Hello, my friend. How are you? Hello. I'm excellent. How are you doing? I am doing well. I'm doing well. We are back home now after I don't know how many days we were away in Queensland, but it was a beautiful time. Good. God did good things. We had good family time and yep, we're home. And my friend, I had a thought this morning. It's October when we're recording this. Yes. And I thought, I want to put up my Christmas tree. Is that wrong? Okay. Um, might or might not have, but definitely did play Christmas music today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> And my oldest daughter was asking me, she's like, mom, when can you start listening to, listening to Christmas music? And I was like, whenever you want. Like, I will never squash <laughs> your dreams <laughs> when it comes to at what point is it okay to, to put up Christmas stuff? I'm like, it, I, for some reason, have just very much felt this. And I'm, I'm normally a, you know, early Christmas decorator. I have no shame mm -hmm. there. I've done that for years. I love it. It's one of my favorites. But for some reason this year, it's been mm -hmm. like all of my kids have been talking about it. I've been thinking about it. I'm like, man, it just mm -hmm. feels like it's right around the corner. So I'm taking yeah. that as a prophetic sign. So as far as I'm concerned, yeah. you go right ahead and yeah. do whatever you want. I won't tell on you <laughs> to the Christmas police. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, my friend, while we're in that space of of being very honest I may or may not have watched a Hallmark Christmas movie last night but anyway we'll just put it out there I have too yeah doesn't matter we're still saved by the blood right. and covered by right. the blood and it's fine it's all yeah, good. We're good yes uh anyway all all Christmas things aside I am really excited to be sitting back in this space and gosh friend I'm feeling like everywhere I'm turning lately that the Lord is highlighting wisdom. Mm -hmm. I just, I feel like, you know, when the Lord's, yeah. Why do you think that is? I really feel like it's the invitation of the Lord to our focus. Like this is something to really pursue in this hour. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think I'm feeling personally like the Lord is even more, um, highlighting even more how much we can rely on our own wisdom and uh, and that this is really a time where we need to be leaning in and really um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use words that um, is it in this passage hang on a sec uh, I don't know if it's in this passage yes it is yes it is so when I read to you in a moment out of Proverbs chapter 2 there's um there's some words in there that's in the Passion Translation and uh, the way it's translated, Brian has written Intercede for Insight and uh, and those words, Intercede for Insight, are just really heavy on me at the moment and so mm -hmm. I feel like everywhere I'm turning and I'm seeing wisdom, I'm feeling like the Lord's like, hey, this is really important, like, you know, this is a place to posture your heart in this season because I'm bringing my church to that you know, he's awakening us to that higher place. Um, and I think it's time in the earth for the wisdom of God to be seen, you know, and the solutions and strategies of the Lord. So, yeah, and it's a cool confirmation as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. What do you think? Mm, should I give you the unfiltered answer or the yep. nice and tidy for podcast answer? <laughs> Um, let's see, because I think we're living in a time where flattery is a thing. I think it's mm -hmm. always been a thing, but I think it's an even bigger thing now. Um, yeah. and I think that that's part of being sober minded, mm -hmm. um, is to be yeah. wise and, and understand wisdom will tell you the truth. It won't beat you up, but it will tell you the truth. And, um, you know, I think it kind of combats some of that, mm -hmm. um, some of the flattery, but I also think it's because wisdom is very grounding and, um, mm -hmm. I've not seen witchcraft mm -hmm. on this level before. Yeah. Maybe 100%. others have, maybe others have, I don't know. 
but mm-hmm. I haven't. And so mm-hmm. that's part of, in my opinion, the grounding piece mm-hmm. of it, of kind of cutting through and revealing mm-hmm. some of those things. And it can be mm-hmm. internal, it can be external. Mm-hmm. We need both. Um, but I think it's one of those clarion just very clear things that just kind of cuts through. It's like just mm. scales, you know, it's like those, mm. those things are being weighed and restored. And mm. so, which is like, if we really let that sober, that sober us up in mm. some ways, it will bring us back to that place of first love purity, mm-hmm. examining yes. ourselves, reverence, yes. worship, mm-hmm. all of those things that come with it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. That's why I think it's yeah, center stage right now. That's really good, my friend. I, I definitely, I resonate so deeply with that. I think we are in such a, a moment where the wisdom of God is needed, but also God is, is restoring that fear of the Lord, isn't he? And he's restoring that place of purity. And, um, and you're right, flattery is a big thing. It really is. Um, and so you can just see, can't you, the way that the Lord is using this whole um, invitation into wisdom because I, I truly believe this is one of the um, words of the Lord for this era. Like I really believe it, like that that the Lord is, it's not just for a season, like it's it's for the era. God is, is highlighting um, wisdom like I've never seen it before. And I think as well, you're right, the the, the level of witchcraft, I personally, and like, I mean, we, you and I talk all the time, we've had some hectic battles, right, with, with that stuff. But now seeing it in the world and seeing it on, you know, display on such a huge level, I've never seen it like that. Um, But the Lord had like, isn't it just like God, right? He knows. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And so, um, yeah, so my spirit is excited because uh, I keep thinking, what does it look like for the bride to embrace wisdom and walk in his wisdom at this level? Like mm-hmm. I, just, I think what is before us right now, mm-hmm. invitation and also embracing the wisdom of God is going to mature and position the bride, I think, in a way that we haven't seen before. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited. My spirit is excited. Um, yeah. But yeah, at the same time, I'm like, it's very sobering and it's very, you know, I, I this, ed, this episode will come out later. So that I've released a word in the past <laughs> um, <laughs> a couple of days ago. Um, and yeah, and like the Lord was speaking about, um, being in the womb of the word. And, uh, and he said one scripture that I don't have with me right now. I don't know it off the top of my head, but it says something like, you know, who, who's going to, um, like give me wisdom and who's going to give me instruction. The Lord is saying, and like, just as I'm reading these passages, um, when I was like putting this word together that the Lord wanted me to, to release, like, again, I just thought, wow, where it coming into the days of not only um, receiving and walking in the wisdom of God, but seeing the power and the majesty of Almighty God mm-hmm. in the earth and in our lives as we walk in his ways and his wisdom in a way that I think we've never seen. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really is that awe of who he is. And so, yeah, just it excites me because I'm like, what does the bride look like when she embraces this place of wisdom in 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 all of its beauty um, in a greater way in this in this era? I think it's just glorious. Yeah, it's glorious. So yeah. Hmm. All right, let's it's dive exciting. in. Yes. <laughs> Let's dive in. All right. Well, I'm going to start this um, today, this morning, um, just by reading to you a um, a passage of scripture in Proverbs 
as you know, we've been diving in around as the Lord leads in the book of Proverbs and other other places, wherever he wants to go. Um, but I've really been sitting in Proverbs chapter two, and I want to read it to you this morning um, from two translations. But then I think I will um, probably focus more on the passion. Um, mm-hmm. But I really think that this is... Um, something that the Lord is highlighting right now. So Proverbs chapter two, verses one to seven says, this is the amplified says, my son, if you will receive my words and treasure my commandments within you so that your ear is attentive uh, to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. And then it says in brackets, seeking it conscientiously and striving for it eagerly. Yes, if you cry out for insight and lift up your voice for understanding, if you will seek skillful and godly wisdom as you would sil- uh, as you would silver and search for her as you would hidden treasures, then you will understand the reverent fear of the Lord that is worshiping him and regarding him as true, awesome and true and awesome and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives skillful and godly wisdom From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores away sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, in brackets, those of honourable character and moral courage. So that's the Amplified. Now let me read it to you out of the Passion. It says, My child, will you treasure my wisdom? Then and only then will you acquire it. And only if you accept my advice and hide it within you will you succeed. So train your heart to listen when I speak and open your spirit wide to expand your discernment. Then pass it on to your sons and daughters. Yes, cry out for comprehension and intercede for insight. For if you keep seeking it like a man would seek for sterling silver, searching in hidden places for cherished treasure, then you will then you will discover the fear of the Lord and find the true knowledge of God. Wisdom is a gift from a generous God, and every word he speaks is full of revelation and becomes a fountain of understanding within you. For the Lord has a hidden storehouse of wisdom made accessible to his godly ones. He becomes your personal bodyguard as you follow his ways protecting and guarding you as you choose what is right. Then you will discover all that is just, proper, fair, and be empowered to make the right decisions as you walk into your destiny. My goodness me, like I I read those yeah. verses, my friend, and I'm like, whoa, 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 yeah. slow down, because each, each one I'm just like, oh, I could spend a week in, in each yeah. one of these verses, they're just so rich. Um, but the first thing I just wanted to jump on was in the passion, how it starts. It says, my child, will you treasure my wisdom? And then it says, then and only then will you acquire it. Mm-hmm. And I find this really interesting um, because in this passage, you can see further on, like it talks about um, the fear of the Lord. Mm-hmm. So you will understand the fear of the Lord. So receive wisdom, then you'll understand the wisdom and um, knowledge of God and the fear of the Lord. But yet as I read this and I read that sentence, my child, will you treasure my wisdom then and only then you, will you re- acquire it? What I see is Actually, I see bookends of the fear of the Lord on either end. So track with me for a second because I feel like there's this invitation into treasuring the wisdom of God. But in order for me to treasure the wisdom of God, I need to recognize the source of of where the wisdom comes from. So if I am like not living in a place of awe and wonder of who God is, like am I going to treasure the words that flow from his mouth? Like am I going to treasure the wisdom that flows? Like and then I'm thinking, so as I approach in this place of like awe and wonder of actually, um, you know, 
treasuring every word and wisdom that he gives because I know I recognize who he is. Then when the wisdom comes, then, and I see his knowledge and he gives me insight or he gives me understanding, that causes me to be on my face as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I just see it as this like full circle of like, or I don't know, like, does that make sense? Complete sense. And it was interesting because I was reading um, our literature uh, selection the other day with my older kids had to do about Mm -hmm. with wisdom. And it had to, it said something, I'm going to butcher this, but it said something along the line, like true wisdom understands its actual, like wisdom means understanding, like the limitation of what you actually know. And (laughs) it's like, I remember talking to you about wisdom and I'm like, the further I go on in my walk with Christ, the more I read, the more I understand, the more I teach, the more I realize how much I don't know. Yes. And I don't mean that to say like, oh, I don't have Christ or whatever living within me because he's going to lead you into all truth. It's not what I mean. What I mean is that you start to realize the actual vastness of the Lord, the yeah. the bigness of him, um, how much there is inside this book mm-hmm. that like, there's a reason why they call it living, like the living word of God. And it's just, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I understand because it's the, the more you go on, the more you see, the more you learn. Yes. The more you love, the more you receive his love, the more you love. And then the more that he reveals to you, the more you realize, oh my gosh, I had no idea what I was talking about. Or, (laughs) you know, (laughs) it's just, yeah, it's one of those things where it is a continual revealing of the majesty, the beauty, the bigness of the Lord. Yeah, and how much he loves you, and how small <laughs> you yeah. seem. You know, it's not making sense, right. like without sounding like I'm groveling or something. You know, no. we're getting into a weird headspace about it, but it's, um, yeah, it's it is a, it is a ever continuing loop of oh my gosh, mm. look at this. Oh my word, look at that. You know, mm. and each time it comes, there's a deeper level of consecration. There's a deeper deeper level of purity. Yes. It's like, you know, and we've been made clean. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We've been made yeah. clean. But at the same time, when wisdom comes and pulls something back and you learn a lesson, you're mm-hmm. like, oh my God. Yeah. Mm. It is a cleansing and it is a, a purifying, but it happens, mm-hmm. I think, in our mind and the way that we think, the way that yeah. we understand. Um, so it's a continual thing. Oh, my friend. So now the, what you just said there, you've just taken me um, right back to a moment that I had this week or last, whatever it was, last week. When did I get back? I'm still in a swirl of like <laughs> a couple days ago. <laughs> Let's say a couple of days ago. But I was, um, I was at Awakening Australia, which, is a, which was a, quite a, a large event uh, hosted by Ben Fitzgerald and uh, Daniel and Chelsea Hagen, and they, they gathered um, believers from all across the nation to come. And uh, it was just glorious. There were a thousand salvations. Like it was just yeah. amazing. Um, and they had incredible speakers. Todd White came and, and a few mm. others. And the last night they had John Bevere. Mm. And, uh, and my friend, um, I know John Bevere has carried the message of the fear of the Lord for a long time. And he has mm. been such a voice and such a father into the church, really um, teaching and um, calling us as the bride back to that place. Um, And I'm I'm just so thankful for him. I just, he's such a gift. And uh, anyway, so here he is in our nation and he releases this, this word on the awe of God and the fear of God. And I was just undone because, you know, when you Mm -hmm. carry a message for so long, and he's carried it a lot longer than me. But, you know, when you've cried out for something and then you begin to see yes. it and I'm like, oh, my gosh, like this is amazing. But one thing that really struck me was in the middle of his message, he talked about a moment where he was hosting a meeting and uh, the presence of God came in such a significant way, like the fear of the Lord, the majesty of God, like it was just crazy the manifestation and you know people were screaming it wasn't like it was glory like terrifying glory but at the end this is the reason why I'm telling you this at the end 
John said he he finished ministering and he walked out and as he was walking out, he saw one of the women that was in the meeting and he said, what am I supposed to say? Like, great meeting. Like, I can't say that because I didn't do it. Like, it was the Lord that came in, right? (laughs) And he's like, I can't take credit for anything. And he said, I didn't even know what to say to her. And she turned to, and he said, she looked at me and she turned to me and she said, I feel clean on the inside. She said, I feel so clean on the inside. And he went, oh, that's what it is. Like, that's what it is. And so when you were talking just then, my friend, that's what I thought of because it's like the more we see um, the majesty of God, the more we're in those moments of like his awe and wonder. I mean, that was terrifying glory, what they experienced. Um and and even and then take it in the context of wisdom you're right like there is a purifying there is a cleansing there is a yeah like oh my gosh i just feel clean even though i am clean i know exactly what you mean um and so i just yeah i think there is something so beautiful about encountering the awe and wonder of God and who he is and his wisdom because it it also challenges our own um our own way you know and our own wisdom and you're right how much we don't know like I sometimes I think oh my goodness me like when I was young and I got like I got saved I was like yes I know so much and now I'm like oh Jesus like I just need you to teach me (laughs) teach me your way do you realize how much you didn't know and how dumb you were (laughs) right Right. Like if you haven't had a really healthy, what was I thinking? Yes. Moment. <laughs> then I don't know that like, maybe we need to, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Come hang yeah. out with me for a while. Maybe that's yeah. what I mean. Cause I have plenty of them, but yeah, no, I, I understand. I get what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think as well, like in the, the context of this scripture, I think where it says, my child, will you treasure my wisdom? I think, mm-hmm. There is a very intentional decision, I think, that needs that um, that is required of us mm-hmm. every time we are approaching the Lord for um, that pl- like that place of wisdom. Let me let me explain. So, if I'm going to approach the Lord and ask for wisdom that very decision of me approaching God to ask for wisdom Mm -hmm. means I recognize that I don't have the wisdom in of myself. And so I think um, in the approach, there is that decision and there's that humility Mm -hmm. that, that is within us that says, okay, I recognize how much I'm in need of you. And I recognize how limited Oh my goodness, I could go on it. I could sit here and talk about this all day, but how limited my understanding is. Mm-hmm. Um, I have just in this season been so confronted with how easily it is for us as humans to think we understand the way God's going to do something. Do you know what I mean? Or we interpret things very quickly. Like God will say something to me and our filters and our understanding is very quick to go, oh, this is what it's going to look like. And then you go, actually, it's not. And it's always more wonderful. Um, Mm -hmm. But I just think, yeah, like there is this beautiful invitation in this hour um, to really lay down our own understanding and to approach the Lord in that place of recognizing, Lord, I need your wisdom. And especially in an hour right now that is quite turbulent, there's a lot of stuff going on. I think even more than ever, um, we need to be in a place where we recognize how much we need his wisdom, but also that we would treasure it. What does that actually mean to you? Like what does that mean to Mm me to treasure the wisdom of God. Well, for me, it means first and foremost, it gets the highest place. Like there is no no conversation, no voice 
no thought, no will of my own that has the higher mm-hmm. place. Yeah. Um, and that heart posture, I think, is that from that heart posture, I think, is where we start to then grow in walking in the wisdom of God because I just I think wisdom and humility are so, so like you can't separate them. Yeah. What is it and that it says? Yeah, she does. She says, <laughs> yeah. hallelujah, Lord. Where is it that it says something about wisdom and humility or is it wisdom and honor? Um. I know I've got it in my notes here. It may just take me a moment to find it. No worries. Because I really think that that's another part of understanding the Lord and the honor that is due to him. Um, But also the humility, the place that we get to, (laughs) we get to stand in humility. You don't have to, but you, if you are wise, you will elect to stand in humility um, cause it's a very safe place. <laughs> it's a very yeah. safe place to be. Um, I'm trying to find it yeah. and I'm struggling to find it. Maybe, um, is it humility goes before honor? Is that it? Oh, let me, let's have a look. No, it's somewhere. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm deep into it now. So now I have to find it. Let me look it up really quick, but I love all that you're saying right now, Lana and, I wonder. Oh, I found because, it. Oh, what, what is it? What is it? Where is, Pro- it? is it Proverbs eighteen twelve? Yes, humility maybe. comes be- before destruction. A man's heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. Probably yes. Eighteen. Eighteen no, twelve. That sounds like it. Eighteen okay. twelve. Okay. Sorry, keep going. Up. I didn't mean to interrupt you. A man's no, no, no. That's what I want. A man's heart is the proudest when his downfall is nearest, for he won't see glory until the Lord sees humility, is what the Passion Translation says. And I flipped over in my notes, and I don't even remember writing this down. I don't have a I know it was when I was preparing for the school. Um, but I wrote down gateways are not immune to the glory that reveals and purifies. Oh wow. So I don't know where that came from. I mean, I do, but I'm kind of like, God, couldn't you have showed me that for when I yeah. did the talk that we just did in your school? <laughs> like, I missed that nugget there. Help me, wisdom. Um, wow. But, but, you know, but that's what I hear you saying, too, is like, mm-hmm. with wisdom comes purity, comes yeah. purification, or comes the, and, and especially when you talked about John Bevere and the glory that came and that it brought, it revealed, but it purified alongside it. Um, I think that that's holy friend. Holy is the word. Holy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah. And I think you mentioned the word consecration. I'm Mm. sorry, everybody. You can probably hear my little Isabella in the background. She's not very happy. (laughs) Um, Hopefully she wants to still be on vacation. She does. She does. (laughs) She doesn't want to be at the beach every day. Like, (laughs) yes, I know. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Um, Yeah, I think when you were talking about consecration, like I just, Mm -hmm. it's just such a a deep, um, a deep invitation in this era. Like Mm -hmm. you and I have journeyed it, you know, through many seasons, just feeling like the Lord is really, highlighting this word consecration is drawing his people um, unto himself. Like, I mean, my shirt says given to him, like, again, Mm -hmm. like just the message of um, giving ourselves completely and fully and wholeheartedly um, to the Lord. And I keep thinking, is it in the book of Joshua where it says, I think it's three, five, it says, consecrate yourself Uh, for for tomorrow. I will do wonders Mm -hmm. among you. And, uh, and I think that here we are in this place where um, we're talking about the wisdom of God. So the knowledge, the ways of God, um, that it, it makes so much sense to me. Like, of course, the Lord um, is drawing us as the bride into this place of purity and holiness and um, consecration to be set apart 
because then as we walk in his wisdom, oh my goodness, the glory that we're going to see. And yeah. I love that um, in this passage, it says, um, if you accept my advice and hide it within you, uh, then you will, uh, sorry, and hide it within you, you will succeed. And like, I just, I feel like um, in this hour, my friend, that in the uh, walking in the wisdom of God, that sometimes the wisdom of God looks completely different to what we would expect it would look like. And mm-hmm. I think sometimes the wisdom and the way of God is sometimes like, to other people, they can think you're crazy, but it's the wisdom of God. It's the way of God. And I think that in this hour that God is bringing us to a place of such deep intimacy and deep dependence upon him that no matter what his wisdom looks like, no matter what his way looks like, that we will obey and that we will follow. And that in that, um, aligning ourselves and walking in the wisdom of God that we will succeed do you know what I mean like there is a so I think that even in the humility and in the consecration um, God is developing within us I think this depend this recognition of our need for wisdom but then also that place of depending upon him and and his wisdom to follow his way no matter what it looks like um Mm -hmm. that is really going to I think change and shape the bride in a greater way and strengthen her um Mm -hmm. in a greater way because I think we have potentially relied a lot as the body of Christ on man's wisdom and, uh, and the Lord is, he really, I mean, we've talked about ascending. The Lord is really calling us higher. Um, so, yeah, so just when I read this, I'm like, okay, accept my advice, hide it within you, then you will succeed. And my gosh, like, even if you go on, train your heart to listen when I speak. Golly, you know, like there's just so much. I feel like this is of utmost importance. It always is to hear to hear, receive, and perceive what the Lord is mm-hmm. saying. But more than ever right now, I feel the urgency on it. Like train yeah. my heart to listen, Lord. Yeah. I'm just digesting like all, all of this that you've just said because there's so many, there's so many thoughts going on in my mind. Like when you said relying upon God, versus relying upon man. I think that one of the things that I've noticed and I've seen is, or I've observed in certain people is this, this place of like deeply rooted identity and that Mm -hmm. it's come coming from him. And when it comes from him, number one, it will be pure. Mm -hmm. It will not disappoint it will be steady. Mm. It's not subject to the falsehood, like the the shakiness of man or the fickleness of man. It's not yeah. subject to the humanness of man. It's mm. pure and where it comes mm. from. And so like, as you were speaking, I was literally seeing the Lord say like, I am a jealous God. And it's not through the place of unholy jealousy. It is, mm. I want you all for myself. Yeah. And it's, but it's, that's a merciful thing too, because when we understand that there's certain mm-hmm. things that if we get it only from not that, if we get it from him and it's mm-hmm. from him and him first, that mm-hmm. actually makes us really strong, really yes. established, really steady, unable to be kind of tossed to and fro. There's mm-hmm. it's because it's for our own strength. It's for our own I don't mean not to be like self-centric or anything, but it's, no. it's like the Lord knows you, it, you have to be all mine. If, you, mm. if you're going to make it, it, you know, and, and grow mm. in these ways, if you're going to behold wisdom, receive her, cherish her, embrace her, as the word says, like it's, it's not, it, it's for your own good. Mm. It's 
not because he wants you to lack in something or he just doesn't want you to have fun or, or have Mm. the things that you want. It's there's, because there's a deeper, there's a more important thing at stake and that Mm. could be lots of different things, but it's like you, you see the people that are able to push off the attacks, push off the confusion, push off Mm. the slander Mm. because they are so solely focused and they know that they know Mm. like their identity comes from him. Their strength comes from him. The joy of the Lord is like, Mm. there's a difference with those people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. They're they're not, they're not easily shaken. They're not easily Mm. strayed. They're not easily deceived. Mm. And so, yeah, that's, I'm just currently, you're seeing my thought process out loud. (laughs) Sometimes I think it's a, it's a kindness of God that I'm a verbal processor because we do this here and I'm yeah. <laughs> currently writing it down. Like that's going to need to go back and listen to that later. But um, yeah, yeah. There's something about that friend that it's, it's, mm. there's a strengthening. There is a, a strength that's coming mm. to, or that's here for, for those of us that are willing to embrace it, that are willing to receive it, you know, directly from him, because mm. I really do think that, there's a lot of, and especially like just a silly example, AI. Yeah. Artificial intelligence. Yes. It's not that there's not good things that it can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But where does wisdom come in? Come on. Yeah. There's intelligence, there's knowledge, and then there's wisdom, which is the right application of the things that you know mm-hmm. or the things that it's taught you, regardless mm-hmm. of what it might look like. Yeah there will be a deeper guiding force or principles that will help you have nuance and help you understand and Mm. see through gray areas. And Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's probably another reason why this is such a big, such a big topic for right now. Yeah. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. And I think you're a hundred percent right. Like there is a strength that comes in, um, knowing our identity and knowing um, who it is that speaks to us because mm-hmm. if I know who I am and I know who he is and what he's speaking to me, then I know that he doesn't change, his word doesn't change, you know, and his ways are good and they're perfect mm-hmm. and, you know, the application of what I'm hearing and the revelation Um, the instruction, the insight, like, and then walking it out, whatever that way he leads me in doing that, that is always for my good, Mm. excuse me, Mm -hmm. always for my good. And, um, And where I follow in his wisdom and his way, there is an empowerment and a grace that is like, next level. And so I think what you've said just about, um, yeah, about being strong, like that strength that is found in that place and in that place of intimacy, I think it's just, I can just see it. Like I can, I can see how the Lord is, is building and strengthening his bride. Like I can see it, you know, through the consecration, I can see that strengthening. I can see that maturity, you know, that God is, is, is really working to bring into the church. And I can see the, um, through the ascension, like come up higher, the Lord really bringing us into that fortified place that, you know what, Matthew 4, 4 isn't like just a bumper sticker. It is the word of God, right? Like man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that flows out of the mouth of God. And so I just, yeah, I really Mm. feel that strength, my friend, that you were talking about. And it reminded me of uh, one of the main declarations, words, whatever you want to call it, um, that I'm carrying in this season is when I heard the Lord speaking over the church and he said, I'm arming you with strength and strategy for the days ahead. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that arming of strength Uh, was not only the Lord saying, yes, like I'm going to bring recompense and I'm going to refresh you and strengthen your soul and, you know, the weariness and all of that, like I'm going to wash all that away. But there was a strengthening that was coming um, in that place of 
the consecration in that place of the intimacy with God, but there's also a strength that is coming um, upon us, I believe, in this hour as we follow in the strategy and the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. So I just keep coming back to Noah. Like I can't get away from the story of Noah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, gosh, Mm -hmm. go build an ark. Like, sorry, what? And like, what is even rain? But yet there was a strength in him, my friend, right? Like there was such a strength that to have others come and go, hey, you're nuts. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) And it's not like you're building it like a, um, a like little tin shed in the backyard, right? You're building Mm -hmm. a ginormous boat. Just go for it. Yeah. And so I just, I think, wow, like this, this season where we are being, we're called to um, really build and tend to what God is having us build. Um, I think there is a supernatural strength that is is coming to us in the obedience to the wisdom of God. Um, but there's also, I, I really believe that strength that's found in, yeah, our identity mm-hmm. and in our intimacy that God is is growing as the refiner's fire has been going, as the purging has been happening, as his wisdom comes and confronts stuff in your heart or in your mind. You know, I just, yeah. So that word strength, you just got me started because Mm -hmm. I really feel. Well, and you know, here's a, here's like when you're talking about it confronts you. And so I want to encourage people because the way of wisdom is not necessarily perfection. It's not that you never make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes and you're going to have things that the Lord brings up that you're Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm going to have to work on that. Or, okay, Lord, I'm going to repent of that and help me to do something different. And, um, you know, I just want to encourage you with that because not you, but I mean, just us in general, all of us, Mm -hmm. um, because right over in Proverbs 3, verse 11, it says wisdom's correction. So Mm. there's no need for correction if you get it all right all the time. So that's not realistic, right? I mean, we're walking on a path, but we can bump off, you know, we can, we can veer, we can bump, we can be guided back on the path. Um, But in this, in this verse uh, 311, it says, my child, when the Lord speaks to you, never take his words lightly and never be upset when he corrects you for the father's discipline comes only from his passionate love and pleasure for you. Even when it seems like his correction is harsh, it's still better than any father on earth gives to his child. Those who find true wisdom obtain the tools for understanding the proper way to live for they will have a fountain of blessing pouring into their lives to gain the riches of wisdom is far greater than gaining the wealth of the world. As wisdom increases, a great treasure is imparted greater than many bars of refined gold. Mm. So, I mean, grace to those of us that are learning, Yeah, you know, and and don't, don't think that just because the Lord's correcting you that that's so, you know, I mean, I was one of those kids in school where it's like, if I got in trouble, I would like, that was worse than actually getting in trouble. Cause I would just sit there and like, you know, <laughs> me too. You know, mentally spiral about how bad I was, well, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, oh gosh. And I mean, can still do that from time to time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's there. Like he, he disciplines, he corrects you because of his passionate love for you. Not because he doesn't love you or he's angry with you or anything. It's because Mm -hmm. he's correcting you, bringing you back on that path. So perfection is not the goal. A learning and attentive heart is the goal. I love that. So, but yeah, friend, there's just, oh my gosh, you have to jump in here because I have so many thoughts going through. (laughs) I get so many thoughts going through that I'm like, okay, Lord, slow me down. Um, well, and that's the other point that I did want to make was just like, even as you were speaking, I could hear the pace of wisdom. Um, Mm. because sometimes in the world that we live in and things are really fast paced that can kind of push us and rush us, especially when it comes to like making decisions or moving on things. Um, and, and I think that wisdom has a pace to her like it talks about walking let's find it oh I feel the weight on that (laughs) chapter 2 verse 9 or sorry let's start at 7 to 8 
For the Lord has a hidden storehouse of wisdom made accessible to his godly lovers. He becomes your personal bodyguard as you follow his ways, protecting and guarding you as you choose what is right. Then you will discover all that is just, proper, and fair and be empowered to make the right decisions as you walk into your destiny. Very good. You walk. We don't dart. We mm-hmm. don't scamper, you know, we don't even dash. It says we walk into our destiny. Um, mm-hmm. So there's a pace there that I'm hearing as you're speaking, mm-hmm. that that mm-hmm. pace of slowing down. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've even felt it in myself, like when my kids will come in and they'll ask me a question. Um, and I'll, I've kind of had to give myself permission to say, I'll decide in a little while. Yeah. Or I'll think about it and I'll, and I'll let you know what mm-hmm. I decide. Um, because the times where I feel that pressure or I feel that rushing to make a decision about something that's usually not helpful, um, makes it harder to hear, makes it Mm. harder to kind of get into that space where I feel like I can have clear thoughts about it. So there's a real permission there in that, in that place of slowing down and listening and waiting Mm. for wisdom. That's very good, my friend. And that reminds me of, um, Let me just get it up on my phone because I don't know the reference. Uh, Hang on. All right. So, yeah, Proverbs 8. So in Mm. Proverbs chapter 8, um, verses 34 and 35, what does it say? If you wait at wisdom's doorway daily, Longing to hear a word for every day, joy will break forth within you as you listen for what I will say. And just when you were talking about that, I thought of that scripture because I think we that what you said about the pace of wisdom, oh my gosh, my friend, that just lit my spirit up because I feel like right now we need to be in um, sync with the pace of wisdom. And I think the starting point for that is I need to, even in my life, I need to not rush ahead every day. I need to wait at wisdom's doorway daily intentionally to hear the word that the Lord is wants to speak for the day. And then I align myself with that word and that way and I walk into it. I mean, gosh, I could tell you of times in my life where I get excited. I'm a very excited person. I get excited about a lot of stuff. But sometimes my excitement has led me to give my yes very quickly. I've run ahead and gone, yes, yes, I'll do it. And then I've gone, oh, my gosh, look at that month. Look at my calendar. (laughs) Right? And and the Lord's like, okay, Mm -hmm. so let me teach you about my wisdom in this, Lana. And so I think there's just a, a place of, um, of the pace of waiting for wisdom, not running ahead in mm-hmm. our life daily, not rushing in our decision making and all of that, hearing the word of the mm-hmm. Lord. But then also, like you said, like with your kids, like, you know, I used to like, okay, I can't say I absolutely love it yet, <laughs> but I used to absolutely hate it when God would make me wait. Like I'd hate it. I'm like, I hate, like, I don't want to wait. Like I have a strong, I have strong feelings about waiting and they're not positive ones. Like, come on. (laughs) But actually wisdom as well, like waiting is also wisdom. Like how many times will the Lord say, just wait? And you're like, "Um, hello, like I, I need it now. And he's like, no, just wait. That's wisdom. Like, and so I just, see on multiple levels as you were talking I was like okay so following in the pace of wisdom I can see like waiting for it then sometimes waiting on it but also what I saw as well was in that passage in Proverbs 2 um, where it says and only if you accept my advice and hide it within you like there's something within, there's something in that. I know what that verse is saying. Like, let it take root. Let it like really like put it deeply within you. But there's something as well, I think, about really meditating on the wisdom of God and not being quick. Like, 
okay, I've heard what God has said and like now I'm just going to rush ahead. But actually, do you know what I mean? Like actually like wisdom being the practical application of what God, of his, like what he's releasing. Um, yeah, I just think, wow, like I can feel something in the spirit so strongly about what you said because even the Lord said to me in a dream recently or two dreams, one of them he said to me, um, you know, Lana, in this season of increased intel, it does not equate the rapid release of revelation. And Mm -hmm. so even when he said that, like, again, I could hear that sound of wisdom's pace. Like, even though I'm pouring out all of this intel in this hour, actually, my wisdom is not that everything is meant to be released. And and then the other night, I had another dream, and the Lord said, um, um, uh, the focus of this season is not to release, but to receive. Again, this place, wisdom saying, hey, slow down. Like the, pl- the posture is hear and receive. Not everything's mm-hmm. meant to be, you know, shouted from the rooftops. Mm-hmm. Different mm-hmm. circumstance, I get it. But same sound I can hear in the spirit. Like I can hear the wisdom of God in this hour going, okay, slowly, slow and steady, slow and steady, slow and steady. Mm -hmm. Um, So all of that to say, Mm -hmm. can you tell that I agree with you? A (laughs) hundred percent. Amen. (laughs) Oh, and you know, I think that like sometimes when we read all of this stuff, it can feel like there's so much, you know, and that it's hard, like, oh, I can like, I've done that to myself before. I'm like, Oh, I need wisdom. I don't know what that means. I don't know what to do, you know? And it can feel Mm -hmm. like, what is that? What do I do? Um, but I love what it says in Proverbs nine, where it says it's wisdom speaking and it's Proverbs nine, verse four, it says, whoever wants to know me and receive my wisdom, come and dine at my table and drink of my wine. Mm -hmm. Lay aside your simple thoughts and leave your paths behind. Agree with my ways, live in my truth and righteousness you will find. And it's interesting because in the footnotes, it says that wisdom's feast will teach us the ways of God. We feed our hearts on revelation truth that transforms us. Then we implement what with wise strategies, the understanding we have learned at the feasting table. So you don't shovel the food in and hork it down and expect to digest well. You know what I mean? Like Mm. you take it bite by bite, you savor, you take your time, you spend time Mm. in it and let it grow. Give yourself patience, slow down Mm. the pace, but trust too, that this is a work of the Lord. Mm. This is a promise. And this is something that like, remember that he wants to lead us into it. He wants us to embrace it. Like wisdom is crying out, yelling out, like embrace me and I'll, and I'll show you, you know, so there's an ease there in that too, that the Lord wants you, wants us to walk in wisdom. He wants us to choose these paths and he's kind and he's not the God that's hard to find. He's going to speak. He's going to guide. He's going to illuminate. And sometimes he's going to snatch yourself back from the brink of something because he is merciful and kind and protective. And so I just, you know, again, and here I've brought myself to the place of just like worship too, because it's like, thank you, Lord. Like how many times have you seen him? Like, yeah, like, you know, like you would your child who's just toddling towards the edge of the stairs and yeah, they're having a great time. They don't, you know, (laughs) Their heart is not that they want to be disobedient. They just don't no. know. That's or they're right. they're seeing something that they're headed towards and you run over as the good parent and you snatch them back. Now, as we grow in understanding, we don't expect them to do that. We expect them to see and to learn as they grow. But mm. I, what I'm trying to say here is remember the heart of the father. Remember the heart of Christ that he wants you to choose good things. Mm. Just like you want your kids and I want my kids to choose the wise things. So does he. So he's not going to toss us out there and say, I really hope you find it. You know, yeah. and he's going he's gonna to help sit with him, dine at the table, like 
eat, what does it say? Dine at my table and drink of my wine. Like that's just mm-hmm. Jesus to me. Like, do you yeah. not, I mean, all I see is Jesus there. So yeah, grace, grace and um, remember his presence that he's, mm-hmm. and he wants us to pick that more than we probably do. I love it. That's beautiful. And that just drips with intimacy. Can you like you feel it when you read that scripture? I'm just like, oh, I can just feel that place of intimacy. Come and dine oh, with yeah. me, you know, like yeah. drink my wine. Well, like, and oh. right next to it in verse 10 is the starting point for acquiring wisdom is to be consumed with awe as you worship oh. Jehovah God. Yes. Worship, drink, sit, yeah. slow down. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All the things that we tell our kids, please eat your meat. You know, yeah, right. <laughs> the broccoli is good for you. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. Uh, so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, just in wrapping up, I want to read um, a very familiar um, yeah. scripture, but it, it just really came to my heart um, in James chapter one. And I'm going to read it to you out of the Passion from verse 5. And what does it say? What does it say? And if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give it to you. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. Just make sure you ask, empowered by confident faith without doubting that you will receive. And I just thought, wow, it's just so beautiful the way that it's written there. Like, and if anyone longs to be wise, ask God for wisdom and he will give it, but he won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with generous grace. It's just beautiful. That's so the heart of the Lord. So beautiful. Yes. Well, amen and amen. Let's say la there lovely ladies and thank you for joining us for another episode and diving deep into all things glorious wisdom of god um may you be blessed this week it's been such a joy to um be with you again and we'll see you next time hello lovely ladies it's courtney from zion's company of women podcast and i want to thank you for all of your incredible support If you've been blessed by the podcast and you'd like to see more content like this, please consider donating to support the Zion's Company of Women ministry team. Your donations make what we do here on the podcast a possibility. Just click the link in the podcast description for a variety of ways to donate, or you can donate via our webpage at zionscompanyofwomen.com. And while you're there, check out our upcoming events, as well as our brand new launch of Scribes of Zion and Zion's Company of Mothers. Thank you for all of your incredible support. And as always, God bless you.